serve as the advocate for the beast incarnate, Brock Lesnar! A famous figure with extraordinary powers. Yep, that's what we usually hear about, Brock Lesnar. His perseverance, commitment, and hard work made him the best superstar for some time. The biggest name in all professional wrestling is Lesnar. Since the first time he entered the WWE ring in 2002, that's been his fate. Hey there, welcome to Wrestling Netic, and before moving on, make sure to subscribe to our channel and hit the notification bell. Let's get straight to the video. Opportunity is all about life, despite what we tell ourselves. Opportunity is frequently the result of chance. The legendary WWE Champion and Hall of Fame commentator Jim Ross said, I saw Brock Lesnar in his junior year in NCAA tournament. I just so happened to be watching television. You know, I tuned in at the proper time and place and saw this gigantic kid wearing a golden gopher single leg from Minnesota. There's magic in this kid, I said. Even his name was unknown to me. He advanced to the championship round but fell short. But he suited such authority. He had the it factor and the it look. Ross had undoubtedly turned to face him and wished to learn more. When he tasked with replacing the WWE's Asian talent roster, Ross has achieved great success with the former Olympian Kurt Angle. Why not attempt to duplicate it with a different amateur wrestler? He reasoned. As Ross remarked, I told Jerry that his Minnesota-born Lesnar kid has something special. I have no idea what kind of guy he is. Now look, I'm not sure if he has a talent for amusement. I'm not sure if he wants to or if he even cares. Other than the fact that what I see of him is quite exceptional. Gerald Briscoe, a former wrestler who worked in the background at WWE, was Jerry. Although, Attitude Era fans may best recall him as one of the Stooges, a hilarious devotee of WWE chairman Vince McMahon, he was actually a crucial component of the WWE apparatus. He also happened to have wrestled for the University of Minnesota coach Jay Robinson's college wrestling squad, which is another instance of chance entering the picture. In WWE, for example, there have been a covert conflict between amateur and professional wrestlers for many years. Amateurs held their noses up and were proud to be genuine, while professionals were only too pleased to deposit checks in the bank each week after performing in front of thousands. You are aware, he works in laboratories. Ross claimed Brock Lesnar would emerge from a lab if all the ingredients for the professional wrestler were present. We wish we had signed him when he was in his junior year, to be honest with you. We wanted to establish a connection. But I believe we could have done so if we had pressed the matter. More valuable than jumping to conclusions and signing his talented player from their squad who was eager to earn money was Jerry's bond with Jay Robinson. We don't know if he, you know, like that's what inspired Lesnar or not. He did, however, return to the NCAA Finals in 2000, where he defeated Wes Johnson of Loa to win the title in an exciting double overtime. However, Lesnar claimed in his book, Dead Clutch, that he was done with wrestling or at least amateur wrestling. Despite the fact that he, you know, had a bid for Olympic gold appeared to be in the most of his small-minded world to be the next logical step. A heated bidding conflict broke out of Lesnar's services. The University of Minnesota soccer coach Glenn Mason and rival wrestling organizations both pushed their claims, citing NCAA regulations that would permit Lesnar to play one season of college football on campus. According to Dave Campbell of the Associated Press via the Peninsula Clarion, Tony Dungy, then coach of the Tampa Bay Bucks offered to give him a tryout. He didn't spend much time making his dues while making, you know, the playing parts in the minor leagues. In March of 2002, he debuted with WWE. He defeated The Rock for the WWE Championship six months later, making him the promotion's youngest champion in history at the age of 25. Lesnar was unable to pursue professional wrestling or martial arts in America due to a protracted legal dispute with WWE. But the two parties have now settled their differences. He made his MMA debut two months after that. MMA fans were unsure of what to think of the convert. As according to Dave Meltzer of the Wrestling Observer, even though Lesnar lost to former champion Frank Mir in his debut UFC fight via submission in just 90 seconds, he still managed to impress the fighting world. Once tamed by fighting science, his bulk and ferocity were obviously going to be too much for the majority of heavyweights to handle. He defeated Randy Couture in just his fourth fight to win the UFC Heavyweight Championship. Lesnar simply outclassed opponents with his dedication and wrestling prowess. Cole Conrad, a former training partner of Lesnar, told the Houston Chronicle in 2010 that it's impossible to grasp if you haven't worked with him and felt his athleticism and explosion. Despite how large and muscular he appears to be, he definitely feels more explosive and powerful. It's difficult to believe Lesnar's climb was swift, but his decline was gradual, like a balloon steadily losing air. He underwent surgery to remove 12 inches of his colon after two bouts with difficulties 
and a diverticultus, which physically transformed him. In his final two and a half years in the UFC, he only competed three times before retiring on the final day of 2011, following a defeat to Alistair Overeem. Lesnar made his comeback to WWE in 2012, the day after WrestleMania 28. The same strong that, uh, you know, booed him from the venue on his final fight eight years prior, now hailed him as a victorious hero. Much like his pro wrestling career had improved, you know, from his standing in the MMA community, his reign as UFC champion gave his WWE character a distinct touch. He took John Cena to the ground in his first game back and then actually used his elbows to slash his head open, according to Bixen's fan. That's not how modern pro wrestling in the vein of the WWE is meant to appear, and that's the purpose. Even while you are aware that you are watching wrestling and entertainment, watching Brock makes you feel though as the match is ready to get out of hand, if not genuine. Lesnar has finally discovered the secret to winning at wrestling. He is now regarded as a special attraction, appearing only a few times annually to cause mayhem and stir up excitement. Every time Lesnar steps onto the ring apron, he always appears sharp, with rust apparently non-existent despite, or perhaps because of his condensed schedule. At the end of the video, Lesnar's 5-3 record barely does credit to the influence he had on the entire sport. His charm and global recognition from professional wrestling helped the UFC reach new heights. He broke the 1 million pay-per-view by Mark three times, including at UFC 100, which set a promotional record according to MMA Payout. But at only 34, he seemed to have outlived his athletic career. Lesnar's comeback to wrestling was his logical next step. WWE was the obvious pick, but all the issues from the first time were still present. Worse still, at least in the eyes of WWE. Lesnar was short on the adaptability and long on cash following his UFC tenure. Still, many things are left to do for Brock Lesnar. The goals Brock Lesnar sets for himself have not been fully realized, and additionally, Brock Lesnar still has goals that will astound the general populace. Here, we're just getting warmed up. That's all for today's video. Thank you for watching the video. Make sure you subscribe to our channel and hit that notification bell so you can get notified each time we post some new video. We'll see you later.